one. Hello, Kia. Welcome to the Human Perspective. Hi, thank you for having me. I was really excited when I met you earlier this year in, 2000, in 2020 uh, to meet you because I've heard so much about you and read things that you've written and know how many people really admire your strength. And uh, so we'd been missing each other. So when we met each other at Sundance, it was a great opportunity to really begin to kindle a friendship and relationship. So thank you for yeah. sharing. I mean, I, I was so nervous. <laughs> I don't know if you know this or not, but you're like a living legend. So I was like, oh my God, Judy knows I'm this. Oh my, I mean, we were following each other on Twitter, but Twitter is Twitter. So I was just like, oh my God, Judy knows I exist. I'm going to go say something to her after watching freaking Chris Camp, which is amazing, by the way. I was like, I should not believe that she knows who I am. And I just realized that we, we had been missing each other, but I didn't realize that you knew that I existed. And so I was so excited to find out that you, you know, were looking to connect with me as well, because I'm such a fan. But that's like, not in a creepy way, in a like, really <laughs> cool, laid back way. <laughs> well, you know, one thing that I believe is really important is how our movement, the disability rights movement, is really expanding. and it's becoming much more intergenerational and much more cross disability and much more racially diverse. And so for me, you represent um, diversity in many ways. You're a black disabled woman who is how old? I'm 28. 28 years old. And so yeah. your um, generation which one are you, Generation Z? Uh, I, no, I'm millennial. Oh, sorry. I guess I, yeah, I'm millennial. You're millennial. You're millennial. So, mm -hmm. um, tell us a little bit, Kia, about what made you decide a that you wanted to be a writer, and b that you wanted to write about the stories that you're telling. Why have you decided to do that? Yeah, I mean, I've always written things uh, since I was. As well. um, I was always writing little things like poems and what I thought were really good songs. I wanted to be like Taylor Swift, but you know, I can't sing, so I had to let that dream die. <laughs> and then I realized that I like talking to people and figuring out what makes them who they are. And so I knew that journalism was the career I wanted to go into. Um, and I knew that I wanted to, I'm a naturally nosy person. So so I wanted to know more about people, and I, and I realized that once, after I got my degree from my college in Fredonia in 2013, that I could also tell my own story, and that was mind-blowing to me, because I didn't realize that anybody would care what I had to say. Um, and then when I found out that people cared enough to read things from me on the internet, that's when I was like, oh, I can talk about myself and have that be valuable as well. And I think in order for me to tell my full story, it has to include disability because that's a part of my life. It's not the only thing about me, but it's such a um, <coughs> monumental piece to my puzzle that I was like, I'm not going to ignore it or pretend it doesn't exist. Even if I'm struggling with it, I want to be as honest as possible. Just because I didn't know how else to be. I didn't want to lie to people um, and I didn't want to lie to myself. So I was very much ready once I started writing about myself to also then write about disability. Has the writing that you've been doing inspired mm -hmm. other people to write about their lives? I think so. I mean, I've been told as much. I think, especially with my book, The Pretty One, in stores now. Um, <laughs> I know, people, I've seen it on the listing. I was like, oh my god, every time I see it, I'm like amazed that it's like even in the real thing. Um, but I, I've been told that people find sort of the representation that I've been longing for in my work, you know, and, and I, that, that I never expected to happen. I always thought that I would be searching forever for a sense of representation, and I never thought that I could be that for somebody else, and that's been the biggest gift of all for me, I think, is to 
realize that I can be the change I want to see. How difficult has it been for you to write as personally as you do? Um, it's tough, never in the moment, but always after I publish it, because I find that people on the internet tend to make assumptions about me. Like, I've had a little rough patch on mental health lives this past couple weeks. And when I said that on Twitter, people were like, oh, well, you know, you just need to love yourself. And I think because I've been so honest about my own journey towards self-love, people feel like I suddenly don't love myself just because I'm having like a bad day or a bad couple weeks. And so the biggest issue I find um, is that people make assumptions when you're as vulnerable as I am. And they don't stop to think that they don't really know you just because they follow you on social media or just because they read something you've written. These are snapshots, not the full picture. Yeah, and my book just came out also. Yeah. Um, <laughs> thank you. Being human. And for me, part of the journey in writing is I'm uncovering things about my life and deciding that I need to write them with as much depth and authenticity and sincerity as possible and so you're kind of going down a rabbit hole and really beginning to feel things and express issues that maybe we repressed in the past. So um, it's been a journey for me and I'm sure it's the same for you. What have been some of the more difficult um, revelations in some way that you've experienced? Um, just the, I think the biggest one was me trying to figure out how to forgive myself for, you know, my younger years, from like high school, middle school, when I started sort of tearing myself down and then I would be like, oh my God, I'm not that person anymore. Like, I live myself now. I have to distance myself from my high school, middle school, you know, early college years. But I think the biggest revelation I had while writing the book was that it's not that I have to hide or chuck that version of myself away. I have to, you know, hug her, give her warmth and love and understand that just because you're not the same person you were in the past doesn't mean you have to necessarily push the past the way you can learn from it, but also, you know, be kind to that person you were because they weren't where you are now. And because you were that person, you got to be who you are now. And sort of just apologizing to my younger self for being like, no, I don't want anybody to know that you existed. Like, you can't, you know, this, I'm, I'm an adult now. You can't be in my life or in my way. And so, yeah, that's the biggest thing I've learned just writing in general, but definitely with the book, is like, it's okay to forgive yourself for who you once were. Yeah, and I would say that it's not necessarily forgive yourself. It's accept that life is a journey. And that every yeah, day like is different. <laughs> because I think also as women, we tend to be more critical of ourselves. You know, I'm mm -hmm. 72, you're 28. And, um, you know, going back and thinking about when I was a kid um, and as I grew up, I'm able to look at things in a different way um, or to experience it in a different way than I could then. And mm -hmm. um, so I think for me, part of what's powerful is um, also writers being disabled writers being able to come together and talk about these issues. Because I yeah. think, you know, there really is an emotional um, experience that we're having. It doesn't mean that Absolutely. there's anything good or bad. I think it's a learning experience. So, I like that. So Kia, um, Unfortunately, our interviews are only 10 minutes. This means that we're going to do another interview with you sometime this year. But if you could 
um, have a message for this audience uh, regarding mm -hmm. or sharing information with those people who are interested in writing, whether or not they're going to be a professional writer or not. Why do you think storytelling mm -hmm. is so important? Personal storytelling. For me, yeah, I mean, I think they open up our world. I think when you read somebody's personal story or stories, you get a chance to see a window into a life you might not otherwise. And I find that in telling stories, we are allowing ourselves to not be erased from narratives. You know, we're allowing ourselves to be truly a part of history. Whereas, like, if we can stand in who we are at all times and not apologize because of it, we're better off just as a community, but also as individuals. We need to be people who can say out loud, I am so-and-so, and this is who am I identify as, and this is what I believe in, and this is why that matters. And in doing so, we're making the world a better place just by being in it. And just by not apologizing for, you know, living in bodies that are outside of standard ideals, and we're not apologizing for being exactly who we are all the time, no break, no stop, just as we are. And I think that that's so important, especially in a world that tries to tuck people like us away. We need to be out loud and proud and be like, yes, yeah, I'm not going anywhere, deal with it. That's just the way it is. And I mean, for me, I try to do that my best way through storytelling and through the written word. And by being unapologetic about being a black disabled woman who was also queer. Like it's just everything all at once is a way for me to say, yes, I'm here. And you're not going to erase me. I'm not going anywhere. Enjoy the ride. You know? Well, I want to say thank you. And I would never say you're not going away. What I would say mm -hmm. is you are arriving and exploding. And I think yes. in a positive way. And I want to thank you for the pretty one. Everyone should go out and look for that book. I'd like you also to get my book, which is yes, uh, The sure. Human Perspective, uh, my last name. And uh, what I also find really exciting is that a number of books in the last couple of years that have been written have been written by disabled women. And I think it's um, powerful because we're women with different stories, um, different backgrounds, and it's an opportunity for disabled women and women in general to really learn about the fact that <coughs> we are as diverse as every other community. So thank you for your work. Um, for the audience, in the filming there are, are a few moments where Kia's face freezes. Um, we're going to use mm -hmm. this tape because I really want to get this story out. So thank you, Kia, for your leadership for your um, commitment to truth. And uh, I really look forward to working with you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank uh, you, Rumi. Oh, my God, I'm such a fan. I adore you. Thank you so much for having me. This was such a good conversation. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, everybody. See you soon. Bye.